Hello again. Uh, I'll try and cover the top points that I wanted to cover in my third session, where we're looking at Tableau around storytelling with data. Before we start, I just wanted to quickly re recap the, the uh, components around the art of storytelling that we discussed this morning. So we talked about how you would do data exploration. Then how we talked about how you might use visual analytic tools to help you with data exploration. We talked about finding the right story that resonates with your audience, and we talked about the design aspect of, of the visualizations as well. The third vendor that we are talking about is Tableau. Uh, it's a US-based data visualization reporting and analytic tool uh, that's been making big waves in the market for the last few years. You saw Paul use Tableau Desktop earlier to connect to Salesforce and do his analysis. <coughs> that was Tableau Desktop. And then Tableau also offers products like Tableau Server, which, is, which allows you to do the sharing within your organization. There's a Tableau Online, which is a cloud version of Tableau. And Tableau Reader allows the users to share, again, but more on an offline <coughs> perspective. The reason why we've picked Tableau as a third vendor for this storytelling session is because, in my opinion, I think Tableau has been a pioneer in the space around storytelling with data, especially when they introduced version 8.2 back in around April uh, this time last year. So, and the ability to create visualizations and create the story by dragging and dropping those visualizations into a timeline uh, sort of works very well from a storytelling perspective, and hence the product. I'll go back to Alan's point about click sense being free. There is a free version on Tableau, which is called Tableau Public. You would connect, use that, download that, use it to connect to your Excel <coughs> spreadsheets and publish the data online. All but it's, it's in a public forum, so be careful before you put your financial figures up on, uh, online there. Yeah. Right, so back again, I've had some feedback uh, from BP. You've all been promoted to data scientists, and we are going to do a bit more analysis, but this time using Tableau. Uh, context is the same. Alan's finished uh, presentation up till about 2005, and I'm going to take data from then, on, then onwards to do the rest of our analysis on Tableau and look at how storytelling works there. Uh, as part of my demo, we're going to look at visual analysis of data. So we'll see how Tableau helps with that sort of initial process around data and identifying the trends. We'll look at how we support the analysis with commentary. And finally, we'll finish off creating some dashboards. So I'm going to move out of PowerPoint and look at Paul's dashboard. No? We'll go back to the home screen. Uh, Paul explained the landing page earlier. I'm going to open a workbook that has got all the uh, connections defined. So I'm going to save you the trouble of watching me connect to Excel files and select the sheets that I'm interested in, etc. What you're seeing there is Tableau's desktop's default workspace. So I've got the, the gray areas, all the visualization space that I would create on. Right at the left, you've got the different data points that I've connected to. So if I just expand that just so that you can read through that. And then below that, I've got the dimensions and measures within each of those sources. So first point, we're interested in understanding the world oil price sort of movement. Uh, so I'm going to highlight the oil price connection that I've got. Uh, and I'm going to double click on Brent spot price. That's giving me a max Brent spot price across time. Uh, I will now double click on date. Tableau then draws me a trend chart to show how that has been uh, moving over time. Uh, actually, I'd be interested in going down to a level of detail at a week level. So I've just chosen week, and then Tableau draws the different time, um, the movement of oil price across week. I'm going to filter the data down to the latest data set. So if I filter that, and I can bring it down to, say, reduce it down to 2001, maybe. It allows me to focus on the data a bit more. So that's the first part of my analysis. I see that there is a big drop from 2008 through to 2009. Um, and I know because I've done my homework, I know that it's down to the recession. So I'm going to highlight that point there and right click and say annotate point. I can choose to leave the week there, but I'm going to remove that point and say probably cost due to recession. And I'm going to leave the spot price on there. So you'll see when it comes up, it shows the actual comment. And I can move that comment around. And I get the data points as well. That is a rich text formatting editor, by the way. So you can, you can change whatever uh, appearance and sort of presentation layer of that very easily. 
Um, I can, so this, I'm now in the analysis process and I'm going through this exercise of trying to understand the trends within the data. So I'm going to open up. So I've, I know I spotted that there is definitely a trend in terms of the last few months of oil price, uh, definitely from about September uh, towards the end of the year, you're definitely seeing, uh, so there you go. So you're seeing from about June through till about December, mid-Jan, you're seeing that dip in terms of oil price. So I'd like to know what else is causing this, right? So I'm going to move on to a new sheet, and I'm going to look at, say, maybe proved. Let's look at production by OPEC and non-OPEC. Non what you can do here is, again, I'm going to double click on production oil, which is, again, sort of saying what is the oil produced uh, by all entity within the time period. But instead of double click on year, I'm going to introduce uh, a very neat feature on Tableau 9, which I love, and I hope they carry on through to the release. So if I double click on the columns there, and I type, yeah, and hit on Enter, Tableau draws a chart. So again, with version 9, I think, uh, I thought that was really cool, the fact that you don't have to drag and drop. You can type within the same column shells to start creating your calculations down there. I'm going to change that to a bar chart and add entity to the color so that you can see how the different entities have been uh, contributing to that market share in terms of production. I know that chart is an early day in terms of analyzing it. You probably want to look at it from a percent of total perspective to understand how much did OPEC contribute to the whole total oil production across time. Let me do the story first, and then I'll show you a finished story, how, how that all looks. So once I've created my visualizations on the different sheets, I would then go in and click this button, which right at the bottom sort of says, new story. I don't know if you can see all of that. Click on that. Tableau gives me a workspace that looks like a slideshow. So I'm going to make the uh, get Tableau to use my entire screen space. And I drag and drop visualizations that I have already created. And I can add commentary here. So you say, look at what has happened to the oil price. And then I add a new blank point to drag and drop the sheet. And that's my second story point. And I can take my end user through these story points one by one <coughs> taking them through what I think is a message, is a cause for the oil price uh, decline that we've been seeing over the last few months. Now let me swap over to a presentation that I've already got tidied up. So I've done the formatting, et cetera, and I'm going to run into full screen mode. Uh, and I've got, as right at the top, you can see that sort of navigation bar. So you know that there are a few series of slides coming. My first slide, I'm talking about what is involved in this oil pricing. Uh, price setting process. You know, OPEC meets every now and then. They define what is a, they understand what's the consumption levels, define what the production should be, and there is a sort of level of economics around setting what that oil price is all about. There's also the futures market that's playing into all of that. So I've, I've written down description there from an end user perspective to gather and understand what what I'm what the background for my story is all about. I then. All the maps have, on the map I'm trying to show who the non-OPEC and OPEC members are and kind of showing when they have been members from. So again, gives the users a bit more understanding around who is OPEC and when, have, when was it formed and who are the members, etc. The second slide talks, highlights the fact that the oil price has fluctuated over time. And again, because these annotations have been made on data points, I can still interact. I can reduce it down to 2,000. The map uh, maximizes, the graph maximizes <coughs> to get me the focus of the time that I've selected, but the data points stay. I can carry on with that analysis. And I'm calling the user's attention with annotation to say that the oil price crisis that I'm interested in is the last one that, uh, that's there. I then look at it from a reserves perspective to understand if there's a regional fluctuation on reserves. Also from an OPEC, non-OPEC perspective, if there was a fluctuation in the reserves. My next chart's looking at is it trying to understand if it's purely a case of supply and demand, you know, how it works with products. If there's no demand, probably that's what's causing the uh, price to drop. On a global level, the two graphs there, the orange, the production, the blue is the consumption. On a global level, they seem to be tracking one another quite closely. So it doesn't say, say much, but maybe that it does. Maybe it does. And this is the point where you know, Gavin was referring to asking questions earlier. People will ask questions on, on how does this matter to my country? You know, how does it matter to my region? Uh, and I'm encouraging the users to do that because in order to tell a convincing story, you need to be able to answer the questions that the users have as well, I think, from a visualization perspective. So I've said here, use a drop-down box to select a country, and let's see how that looks. So if I drop that down to, say, for example, US, 
you'll see how the consumption has been significantly higher than production all the way through. You'll see that the cons consumption has continued to increase. There is a dip in the 1970s. And if you read and if you see the Planet Oil documentary, you'll learn that it's all about peak oil and all that sort of uh, discussions that's going on. So clearly an increase in terms of consumption, decrease around production, but a recent increase in terms of production even. So there's that last peak there. Um, I'm sure you're all thinking, what about United Kingdom? So, yes. So I want my users to ask me the questions, and I've got set up the dashboard so that I can answer them quite easily while they're at it. And on my last slide, I'm trying to summarize to say, well, I've done my analysis. I think there is a message that we're, that's coming out here. Uh, I'm quoting, I've, I'm going back and picking messages from Ali, Bra Ali bin Ibrahim al-Naimi, who is the petroleum minister for Saudi Arabia, and looking at the messages that's coming from him. So when pe the price of oil has been declining, He's been sort of saying, oh, 100 and 120, 100, 110 is still an okay price for pet, uh, oil. I don't think we should be worried. Later on, he was questioned. He still said, well, Saudi Arabia is working with all the involved parties to try and understand where, you know, how we can help with the pricing, etc. Right, I think it's in December, 11th of December, where he says, why should I cut production? I don't want to lose market share to anyone else. So again, I think there's a clear message trying to come. Uh, no political sort of standpoints here, but I think I I'm, all I'm calling is on facts and what people have been talking about. Um, and then on the 22nd of December, he, he goes to say, he, quoting uh, Alaimi there, it's not in the interest of OPEC producers to cut their production. So there is clear message coming out of it. The graphs on the right is, again, trying to understand the things from, a, from Naimi's perspective. So there has been an increase in US shale oil production over the last year or so. You can see that there is a red, that red area chart has been increasing. There has been a threat on reducing OPEC market share too. So the last bar there is negative and is on the red. So clearly, we're trying to say a message here. That was my demo. I'm going to go back into my presentation. So what we saw from those sessions was how we would do a visual an analysis of your data. We talked about how you might support your analysis with all the commentary. And we saw how you, Tableau helps you to put all of that into a story. And we did that all as data scientists in BP. But now again, snap, take back your own roles. There's no reason that this data can't be your data. There's no reason that you'll be looking at, the, you could be looking at your own products, how that's performing in the different markets, and compare your own performance versus your, the different suppliers or retailers, et cetera, if you're a CPG company. There's no reason that analysis can't be done on insurance data or, or any of your data sets. So really, in terms of summarizing the session, I think there are, four key points that I want you to consider. As Trevor touched upon earlier today morning, top performing companies are all data driven in their decision making process. And I think there is a storytelling provides the option to make your data more engaging by telling stories with it. As soon as you tell a story, it's become more emotional, it's become more something that you really believe in and you want others to believe in, you want others to buy into it. <coughs> There are many ways to tell a story. So we've seen some. We've seen how we can build dashboards. We've seen how you might do an annotated chart. I showed that on Tableau. We looked at how you might do slideshows. We did, Alan did slideshows on his ClickSense. I showed how we would do click send, uh, slideshows on Tableau. We also looked at how you might say an author-driven story by using animations. And the third point is all around finding the right balance between an author-driven story and a reader-driven story. Do you want to tell a story and for people to consume it? Or do you want the users, do you want to invite the users to make the story their own? At which point, you know, they start believing it. They start doing your selling side of things to the other people in the business. Final point, you have got to keep it simple. If the story is too complicated to read, people won't understand what it's all about. I think that was everything that I had on my session. So thank you very much for staying, staying on the extra few minutes. I'd like to call upon Trevor back again on stage to wrap up, please. Thank you.